Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Family members say a fight between two brothers leads to one of their deaths. Jerry tried to shoot me at least five or six times. Tonight, a Danville man injured in a shooting speaks out about the moments leading up to it. The Lexington community helps out the family of the former UK football player that fell off the upper deck at Commonwealth Stadium. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Friends tell us a fight between brothers turned deadly last night. Good evening. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Lexington police charged 45 year old William Watkins from Paris with reckless homicide and DUI. They say he hit Brian Watkins with his truck on Woodview Drive. Jordan Vlad spoke to a neighbor who ran over to try and help as soon as it happened. She has our top story at 11. Just moments after hearing screeching tires and car doors slamming. I just thought, oh wow, oh wow, what happened? Missy ran out onto her front porch. Too close to home, way too close. Staring in shock. About that time the police showed up. At the scene before her. I saw the blood rolling down the street like it had been raining for a week. Officers say William Watkins was driving his pickup truck when he ran over his brother, Brian Watkins, on Woodview Drive after the two allegedly got into an argument at a relative's house down the road. Family members tell us that William was driving this direction towards the intersection when he hit Brian around this area and then, as these red lines here indicate, carried him several feet down the road. By the looks of the truck, he had to have been doing 50 miles an hour. They were screaming, my brother, my brother. The driver threw himself on top of the man that was laying there and then rolled him over. And of course, me and the lady that was talking to the 911 operator said, don't move him, don't move him. But he did anyway. And that's when we got to see what really happened. Brian died from his injuries a short time later at UK Hospital. William Watkins is now charged with DUI. Once we talked to him, we could tell that he was obviously very drunk. As well as reckless homicide. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Funeral arrangements for Watkins are pending at this time. We're tracking two developing stories tonight. Kentucky State Police are investigating a deadly crash in Boyle County that happened on Forkland Road near Parksville earlier this evening. At this time, troopers haven't said how many cars are involved or what caused the crash. And here in Lexington, police and fire crews are still on the scene of an injury crash involving an officer on Winchester Road and Eastland Parkway. Police tell us the officer was responding to a gas leak at Winchester and Fortune. And when she tried to turn left at the intersection, someone hit the side of her cruiser. We're told crews rushed the officer and two others to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Lexington fire crews are still trying to figure out what caused an apartment fire downtown today. We're told the fire started just before 2 o'clock on the balcony of a third-floor apartment on Main Street. Firefighters were able to put the fire out quickly and keep it from spreading. Crews evacuated everyone in the building. When you get in a, a, a building fire where there's multiple units like this and multiple businesses, you really have to be uh, conscientious about the fact that, you know, the earlier we can get to folks and get them out, the, that's that many things less that we have to, you know, be concerned about. It's hard for firefighters to pinpoint exactly where the fire started or what caused it. Apartment managers say crews have been in and out of the unit all week preparing for a family to move in. There were some tense moments this morning when Scott County deputies trying to get a man to come out of his home. Investigators say Craig Lynch assaulted his girlfriend, and then when deputies got to the house, they say he wouldn't come out. Deputies say they smashed the windows and found Lynch hiding in the attic with a gun. They say he surrendered peacefully after about eight hours. It's very intense, and you have hours of waiting and and uh, doing everything you're trained to do. And these guys definitely did that today, and the outcome was as good as it could be. A crew did take the woman assaulted to the hospital to be checked out. The Danville business owner shot this weekend is talking to us tonight about what happened between him and the man police say tried to kill him. Danville police charged Jerry Mathis with attempted murder. They say he shot Rick Cole Friday night. Cole told us Mathis was doing some work on his car but hadn't finished the job. And when Mathis asked for the money early, Cole wouldn't give it to him. We're told the two men started wrestling over a gun, and that's when Mathis shot Cole. Jerry kept trying to maneuver the gun up towards my head and kept pulling the trigger. I could feel the gun ham hammer um, slapping against the inside of where that I had had, had wedged my finger there. Um, 
If my hand had not been wedged there, Jerry tried to shoot me at least five or six times. Mathis is in the Boyle County Detention Center. He declined our request for his side of the story. Investigators in Lexington are trying to figure out what led to a stabbing on Alexandria Drive this morning. Crews rushed two people to the hospital with injuries. Police say someone stabbed one of those individuals in the stomach. We hope you've been enjoying the beautiful weather and sunny skies this weekend. Changes are on the way, though, as we head into the work week. WKYT's Mike London has a first look at the forecast. Hey, Mike. Hi, Kristen. It certainly has been beautiful here as we wrap up the final weekend in the month of October. But as we head into the final Monday of the month, well, more of the same is expected. Right now, live first alert defender not really showing us very much of anything, but there it is, Kentucky most Kentucky's most powerful Doppler scanning the skies. Not much to see, though. Tomorrow, we'll still see sunny skies. There will be a few more clouds in the forecast, but nonetheless, much warmer than normal. 75 degrees in some spots close to southern Kentucky in the Tennessee line could sneak close to the lower 80s tomorrow. Certainly something you don't expect to find as we get closer to the month of November. But coming up for my full forecast in a several minutes, here's what I'll be talking about. Of course, this warm Monday ahead of us, which is going to be abnormally warm for this time of year. But some changes are on the way. And as early as Tuesday, Wednesday, we could be looking at not only some rainfall, but some possible thunderstorms back into the forecast. And behind that active weather, not only colder air on the way, but some big changes to the conditions that we'll see that might remind you that there is another season after the fall that begins with the letter W. I'll be talking about that and more coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. Hungry families at Lexington Johnny Carino's restaurants filled their plates today to help out a former UK football player injured in a fall. Brad Durham fell from the upper deck of Commonwealth Stadium during the South Carolina game earlier this month. WKYT Sam Smith went to Johnny Carino's, where the restaurant put on a Dine to Donate fundraiser to help pay Durham's medical bills. October 4th, Commonwealth Stadium. Brad Durham was cheering on his alma mater as they took on South Carolina. He took this photo from his upper deck seat. Later on, Durham would fall 35 feet onto the lower deck. I was actually at that football game. I didn't know it happened. Um, I read about it afterwards and thought it was, you know, really horrible. Durham was rushed to the hospital. He had back surgery and is recovering at Cardinal Hill. Durham was a lineman for the Wildcats. He works with Johnny Carino's now. His company does marketing for the restaurant. Sunday, people here helped out one of their own. The last thing we wanted to do is have him worried about, you know, the financials and the bills. 20% of all sales from the two Carino's locations will go to the Durham family. Um, we're seeing a lot of UK shirts coming in, so that's a good thing. We talked with Durham's father last week. He says his son is dealing with short-term memory loss, but he is walking around and he is doing well. Customers are happy to help out the Durhams. Medical bills are very expensive, especially nowadays. And are hoping for a speedy recovery. Uh, we were coming out to eat anyway. Um, and money we were going to spend anyhow, and now it's going to go, at least part of it's going to go to a good, good cause and help out this family. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. If you'd like to help Durham's family, you can visit any central bank location and make a deposit into the Brad Durham donation account. Coming up with the election a little more than a week away, we're gearing up for a debate between the 6th District Congressional candidates. We'll show you where you can catch the debate. Also ahead, four teenagers are fighting for their lives tonight after being shot at a Washington high school last week.